Well, uh, as the international uh, Tokai Asu Day is approaching, we were wondering to talk a little bit about Tokai Asu with someone who is really authentic when it comes to Asu. Uh, I have the honor to greet Charlie Munt, who is the Managing Director of Royal Tokai. And uh, my, my immediate question is that what makes Asu that much special? We know that there are some other dessert wines out there, same botrytis technology is involved, but what is that really puts us apart from anything else? Well, it's an extraordinary wine. When I first became interested in wine, Tokayazu already had this magical, legendary status. So I was delighted to have the opportunity to take over at Royal Tokai. Um, any great wine really has to come from a very specific place. And the region of Tokai is, is unique. It's a combination of beautiful, old, extinct volcanoes, which combined with the climate give an incredible personality to the grapes and therefore to the wine. So Tokayazu could only ever be made in Tokai. The conditions which shrivel the grapes and concentrate mm -hmm. their incredible flavors uh, are unique to the region. And that is what means we have the ability to make these incredible dessert wines. Wonderful. So why don't we try some of them and with some special pairings over there? Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. So surely probably people know the Asu as a dessert wine, but here we have some savory starter kind of food. What is your recommendation when we try to pair Asu to that? Well, absolutely. One of the, one of the unique characteristics of Asu as a dessert wine is, is its incredibly high acidity. Everyone tends to focus on the sugar. But you, if you start to think about the sources you would have with particular meats, um, that can give you an idea. So Hungary's, one of Hungary's great gifts to the world is the Mongolica pig, which is a magnificent breed of pig. Um, so when you have that richness, it's wonderful to have the acidity of the wine cutting through it and giving it freshness. Uh, in fact, a, a sommelier friend of mine in the US has started using this wine in his stuffing at Thanksgiving. Awesome. So when he puts chestnuts and herbs and our wine together to serve with his turkey, it would also work at Christmas as well. Your, complementing the richness with the beautiful freshness of the wine. Probably at this point we should clarify because this is going to be a five puton, mm -hmm. five barrel or basket yes. uh, also. Uh, and uh, later we have six puton as well. So how would you characterize the difference between these? Are, are these quality measurements at all? They, they, they still are and were originally measures, measures of sweetness. So the higher the number, the sweeter the wine. But equally, we always dial up the acidity as well, so we have balance. Um, so I think it's really for you to decide which you prefer. And equally with the time, I think with something like this, the sweetness is still there, but we're really focusing on the freshness. Uh, if you're looking at the sort of apple characteristics to go classically with pork, then that's what you have here with the five tons. So probably for a savory meal to pair it with a less Kutoin number of soup is a good idea. I think, I think as a general rule, good. but there are no hard and fast rules. Do what works for you at your house with your friends, I think. Thank you. Why don't we move to the yeah. other table where we have, probably this is the true environment for any Asu dessert or pudding, as you would put it here in, in the UK. Yeah. Um, is, is that really the place of the Asu? I think, I think, um, it can, it can be happy with savoury, it can be happy with sweet as well. But this, I think in most people's minds, because these are often called dessert wines, this is where they sit. Where you have sweetness, there are very few wines from anywhere in the world that have these sugar levels. And that's what really you need to, to match. And again, we have some wonderful Hungarian specialities. We have chestnut, we have sour cherry, we have chocolate as well. But none of this should ever be heavy together. And, and that's why the wines of Tokai uh, they help to lift at the end, so nothing is too ever too heavy and cloying. You're always left with a sense of freshness, and hopefully you want to have another bite and another sip afterwards. Right, sounds good. Okay, and, and let's try another different realm of pairing. Uh, cheese are always yes. uh, an important chapter when it comes to wine pairing, but uh, how would it work with uh, Asu. And which cheese is okay for us? So if there's any particular type well, of cheese. Well, I, I think here we have we have a couple of, of beautiful blue cheeses. Mm -hmm. um, blue cheese, um, in the process in which they're made, it does actually produce quite a high acidity as well. 
And again, the wine helps with that. This is where a lot of people uh, in the last 100 years would classically have turned to port, um, but 200 years ago would always have turned to, to Tokayasu. Um, so again, here you've got beautiful salt levels um, and a slight acidity from, from, from the cheese making process. And then you add, almost as you would with a chutney, you add a sweetness, a beautiful fruit character. And the two together, uh, I hope you'll agree, uh, are absolutely fantastic. May I say that this is my favorite pairing? I don't know if it's proper to say, but this is just amazing. Here again, we, we tasted the six food toys, so uh -huh. that's the sweetest one here in our comparison. And it just works beautifully with the, with the, with the blue cheese. Just amazing pairing. Yes, it finishes the meal in some style, certainly. Well, thank you so much for your help and, uh, and your guidance and uh, let's celebrate together International Asu Day. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.